Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Celtic Warband here, and thanks for tuning in to another unfortified town assault in Medieval Kingdoms 1212 AD. This was uh, two attackers versus one defender, but it's balanced accordingly to make it a little bit more fair. The attackers had 23,000 each, so 46,000 altogether in funds, but no more than 30 units, making the total 60. Meanwhile, the one defender had 35,000, so 11,000 less in money, but he was allowed to bring 40 units. And this town does favor a, a pretty tight defense, as they've got uh, some smaller streets, so hopefully you will see some really good fighting in the streets. And I hope you guys enjoy. Without further ado, let's go ahead with the army comps. So the first attacking army we're going to take a look at is the Empire of Trebizond, and this one is commanded by myself. And we've got my glorious cavalry over here just facing the city. I have two units of high period Dynatoy, which are uh, a decent, decently elite shock cav, but not the best. And then I have the Emperor's bodyguard over here, all in gold. And he's bringing uh, his great, great cross necklace to battle. Hopefully that will help him uh, endure. And then I have 10 units of these Skutatoi Swordsmen of the Late Period, so they are pretty elite. I think they're one of the best units I can get that uh, still carries a shield. And then if we run over here, I've got a pretty wide formation just because I want to cover as much of this settlement as possible. But I have four units of these heavy archers. I have a catapult. I have four units of Skutatoi, which is my Late Period Spears, my best spears that I can bring. And then I have five units of Italian mercenaries. These guys are pretty solid. Their missile block chance is quite low. But if I can protect them and get them into melee, they should do uh, decent for me. And then my cream of the crop. Every time I play as these guys, a lot of people seem disappointed that I don't bring them. So I brought three units of anglo Varangioi. Uh, again, you really have to be careful with them against uh, enemy archers. But they are pretty solid in melee. So that's it for my army. Let's go ahead and take a look at my ally. The other attacking army joining the Empire of Trebizond is the Empire of Nicaea, commanded by Hohen Master. And we're zoomed in right at the Spatheroi Guard, which are very, very awesome looking. They've got these red and gray capes. Uh, it's a limit to three, so he's only brought three of them. And then for the rest of his swords, he's brought three more units of the Skutatoi Swordsmen of the Late Period, so same as myself. And then he's gone very heavy on the anglo Varangioi. He's brought six units of them. So hopefully he'll be able to use them effectively. And then, of course, he's got his Varangian Guard. You guys know how much I love the Varangian Guard. So he's, he's capped to, obviously, one unit of that. And then he has his Emperor's Bodyguard of the late period as well. So we've got the Emperor of Nicaea and the Empire of Trebizond joining this battle. And for the rest of his force, uh, he has four units of uh, Skutatoi. So two on either flank. He has three units of Dynatoy of the late period. He has one on this flank and one on the other. And then he's bringing four units of uh, Mortatoi, which is a cheaper tier one bow, cav or bow uh, infantry. And then he has four units of uh, Contaratoi, uh, which is, again, a tier one medium pike. But hopefully they'll be able to do some damage. And then he has a catapult as well. So pretty elite army for Hohen Master as well. So let's take a look at the one defender, and then we will get the battle started. Defending this unfortified town, we have the Kingdom of Jerusalem, commanded by Hamdog CDXX. And his army is kind of spread all around the city, so I'm going to kind of just do an overview of it. And then uh, we'll see more of the up-close, in-person units when we get to the actual fight. Uh, it's just because I want to make sure to cover everything. Uh, so in the town center, he's got a couple units of these uh, Crusader Padites, which is a very uh, elite pike unit, tier 3. And he's also got a lot of these dismounted Fratres Milites Hospitalis, which we were zoomed in at. He's got them scattered uh, around the city, along with these Urbum Hastarum Lorcati for his spears. He is bringing one catapult as well, and he's got some military order swordsmen of the late period. And most of his uh, bows are in the center here. Actually, in fact, all of them are. So he's got four units of his, his Hospitaller dismounted uh, Turcopolier. And uh, they're not really French, so that wouldn't be yay at the end, like Turcopolier. But uh, it would be some kind of Muslim, I'd imagine, pronunciation. 
And then he's got three units of Hospitaller Heavy Caravan. These guys are super elite. They can actually form a square as well. And they, they do really well against enemy cavalry, infantry. They hold their own. So he's got three units of them. And he's got some more military order swordsmen over here. Uh, in this long line here, he's got uh, some more uh, Crusader Petites. But these are heavy pole arms. And he's got some dismounted Fratres Milites Hospitalis. These guys look amazing. Really, really nice looking. And I think that's most of his forces. He does have some cavalry outside. He's got the Master of the Hospital. And two units of Fratres Milites Hospitalis. And then over on the other side, he has more cavalry as well. So then he has the Grand Master, which is his actual general. So he's got kind of a commander, sub-commander thing going on. And then he's got two more units of Fratres Milites Hospitalis over here as well. So a lot of cavalry. Hopefully he can use that to his advantage. I'm really excited uh, for this one to get kicked off. Actually, let's just show you the man count real quick. We have 8,600 men to his 5,600. So we have a 3,500 man advantage. And the battle is quite long. It's about 55 minutes. Uh, so if you need to take a break, come back and watch it later, that is fine. But uh, let's get started with the battle. <laughs> All right, so the battle starts with the master of the hospital actually consulting my general uh, outside the settlement. Uh, the general was running down some of his uh, civilians outside the walls that were farming, but he managed to kind of zone out our cavalry and save as many citizens as he can. He's tried to negotiate for a reasonable, you know, kind of diplomatic option for... Uh, both parties, but it was refused, so he's going to withdraw back into the city center now, and the battle will officially begin very soon. Uh, we're going to jump uh, out of the cavalry for now, and just uh, take a look at how our forces are set up. So I'm bringing my archers more to this flank. Uh, I may or may not have been a little bit cutthroat in my thinking. I was hoping that he wouldn't move in time so that I could get a couple volleys off into his master of the hospital. Just kind of to show our open disdain for the Kingdom of Jerusalem holding the settlement here. But now we're going to start and go after the watchtowers. So I'm trying to aim at them with my catapult. I think on the other side would be the same for Hohen Master. His catapult will be firing to try to remove these towers and also possibly burn some of the settlements as well uh, maybe get some pretty serious debuffs for Jerusalem's forces now the balance of power is quite out of uh, Hamdog's favor he's really going to have to utilize all of his men to their best if he's going to have any chance of winning there we go getting a couple of volleys off there we've got the spears with their shields up over here the Has Hastarum Lorcati uh, they've been charged to hold these outer walls, but it looks like they're going to uh, just reform a little bit, maybe get into a more of a loose formation. Yeah, actually, uh, looks like looks like Hamdog is going to push forward his catapult, so he's probably going to try to get into range of my catapult and take it out early on in the battle. Let's see a nice. Uh, are they going to be firing, or are we just moving forwards? I think we're just going to move forwards a little bit. But look at all the carrion as well. Hoping for some dead bodies to feast on later on, I would imagine. Yeah, the catapult is pushing up now. They're already winded for some reason. That's kind of funny. What is mine? Mine's active. So he's going to probably try and go for a couple of sneaky shots off on my catapult. If he could get rid of his cat my catapult, that would be very beneficial for him because those arrow towers in Attila, as you guys know, can really rack up a lot of kills. So for him to kind of neutralize my catapult early on would be in his best interest. Now the only problem is on the other side... I don't think there's anything that can stop Hohen Master from firing down his catapult. Although I'm not even sure if he is firing at this point. No, it looks like he's holding fire. Maybe hoping to get a little bit closer. But yeah, here we go. I've actually started a couple of volleys into his catapult. There we go, getting one with that shot. And then, boom! 
hitting two catapults with that other shot as well. So he's already down to one catapult. Uh, so if you're rooting for the defenders, that's a really hard sight to see. The only kind of good part is that now he has 40 men to man this one catapult. And looks like I still have all four of mine, but that could change very quickly. Still just trying to eliminate that catapult as quickly as I can. Here comes another volley. Looks like it's uh, gonna go over as well. Maybe hitting some of my men. Just going over the heads of the Italian mercenaries. Here comes another shot. Oh, yep. Getting a lot of my Italian mercenaries there. That's probably eight or ten men dead. And they're just gonna reform. <laughs> Not even wait for the fire to dissipate. Artillery is a great help. Artillery is a great help. Yeah, that it is. It's a great help for the enemy, too. But we've already got the settlement burning as well. If we kind of zoom in, you can see that, you know, a lot of the buildings are starting to catch fire. And, oh, this looks good. Yes, getting getting one of my catapults out of the, out of the battle. But that's all right. I still have three more. And if we zoom over to his side, I don't know why we uh, jumped into that cavalry unit. But rolling, rolling. Yes, got rid of the last catapult. So uh, Hamdog CDXX, he is out of a catapult now, which is, uh, which is really hard because when you're a defender, that could really rack up a lot of kills. But unfortunately, uh, he didn't too get too many at all. Uh, how many? He got 12 kills on my Italian mercenaries, but that is about it. So I just wanted to showcase that kind of uh, preliminary battle. So we're going to cut it here, guys, and then we'll pick up the battle again once uh, the heavy fighting has commenced uh, outside the city walls. All right, guys, welcome back, and we are pick it up just as Hohen Master has moved forwards his catapult to try and get closer to get the second tower that we need to get rid of. But it looks like we got a charge from the very elite Jerusalem cavalry into some of Hohen's master's uh, pikemen, and they were not able to get their pikes down in time, so they got a very decent charge. And Hamdog is just able to turn right back around and go after the archers and the catapult crew. Uh, it looks like he is going to uh, try and pull back his catapult crew, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you can see he's pulled them just away from the battle, which is a really good call. Uh, he has, like, full ammo on this catapult and their Tier 3 Chevron. So uh, a decent amount of money has been spent. So you really don't want to get rid uh, or lose your catapult crew this early on. But... Yeah, this elite cavalry is just going to continue pushing forwards. And the catapult crew is right there. I think he's going to even pursue them. So well done by Hamdog there. Really kind of getting around uh, Hoenn's formation. But it looks like Hoenn Master is able to withdraw his catapult crew even further. However, now they're just going after some archers that are exposed. These swords need to hurry up and get into the fight quickly. But they are starting to take some pretty heavy casualties now. The pikemen have uh, essentially zoned them out, as you can see. Or actually, they're starting to turn the wrong way, though, which is not good. I think he's trying to reform his pikemen. But yeah, there we go. So that cavalry unit has broken. But uh, they got 121 kills already. That is crazy. Look at that man count now. We're already down about 150 men. Meanwhile, he's lost uh, about 80. So, so far, so good for Hamdog CDXX. Uh, I had actually forgotten about that part of the battle. So, I'm going to make another cut here because I don't think anything else happens until we actually push into the city. But I didn't want to miss that epic uh, cavalry charge. So, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Alright guys, welcome back, and the battle has just begun with Hamdog's forces charging my spears that are in shield wall outside the city. Uh, unfortunately, he's had uh, a little bit of an issue actually against all of our archers. A few of his archer units were routed in the skirmish phase. I've cut most of the skirmish phase out just because it really isn't necessary to see uh, too much, because not really anything epic happened. 
But uh, there was a unit of dismounted uh, Turcopolier over here, or Turcopolier, uh, that was routed by my archers. Uh, however, he did manage to route one of my archers as well, so you can see my heavy archers over here are quite weak. And then on the other side, Hoenn Master managed to get a unit of his Dynatoy uh, in over here and break uh, one of the units of archers. And it looks like this spear unit uh, was successful against the Dynatoy, but now that they're pulling back, they're getting shot in the back by the archers as they move towards the town center. So uh, it, it's pretty big pressure. The pressure is on, basically, for him right now. Over here, I'm just starting to charge in my men uh, to his shield wall. And with that, I'm going to quickly move another unit of Scutatoy Swordsmen over here as well. But uh, these uh, Urban Loricati are, are a very solid spear for the Kingdom of Jerusalem, so they should be able to hold quite well. So yeah, I'm pretty much engaged on two fronts now. Hoenn Master is being a little bit more cautious, but then again, he does have some more catapult ammo than me. And uh, I just don't really have any good positions for my archers. Over here, you can see that these archers, uh, they've actually, they're actually obstructed quite a bit. Where I'm not getting a lot of good fire. I am able to shoot a little bit over into this unit of uh, Turkopolia, or Turkopolia, but uh, not too much. Over here, though, I because there was only one unit engaged over here, I did manage to sneak a whole unit of Scutatoy Swordsmen over around to uh, the flank and get around these dismounted uh, Milites Hospitalis. And with that, I'm going to quickly follow another unit through this gap as well because I know that uh, Hamdog will be ready with his uh, unit of spears to get a good flank off on my men. And then the flankers become the flanked. But I'm going to leave it on slow motion just for a little bit. Kind of gotta let you guys enjoy the scenery of the battle. Especially with the flames right next to the fighting troops as well. That looks really cool. There go my uh, archers uh, firing at his units of archers. Because if we can eliminate his archers, uh, he's essentially going to have to come to us. He's not going to be able to sit there for too long and soak up all of, uh, soak up all of our fire, basically. In this siege, really, for the Kingdom of Jerusalem, for them to win, uh, they need to make use of every bit of manpower possible. But yeah, here come the spears, just as I thought, so I'm quickly pushing that second unit to stop them. Uh, because if I can stop them right here, then they're not going to get that uh, bonus against my men, saying that they are attacked in the rear. Let's go ahead and just look at the other side. Yep, still not much is happening from Hoenn's side, but we'll keep an eye on that. So let's go ahead back over here. I'm pushing forward some of my Italian mercenaries uh, to try and, you know, help bolster the lines. Uh, but unfortunately for me, we've got some of the Fratres Milites Hospitalis closing in. So they are definitely going to help his side turn the tide over here. Because my Italian mercenaries, to be honest, uh, they're not the greatest. But there they are in, in the battle. I've got my spear wall holding, though. I don't want to engage my spears in case I need to have a fallback line, so I've left uh, those two units there. And it's the same with these two units, leaving my fallback line in place as well. Uh, but this unit of Scutatoy Swords is shaken. I believe that's from the heavy cross or heavy cross -pitaler. heavy hospitaler caravan that's over here. Because uh, they are getting some nice uh, shots on the rear of some of my men as they're turned around fighting the Fratres Milites Hospitalis. And this unit is holding quite well for a tier 1 unit. Granted, they've only got 4 kills so far, but they're, I think they're still doing quite well in tying up a lot of my forces so that his more expensive units uh, can get the kills. But they're just throwing themselves against this spear wall, but they're really not going to be able to do too much against it as long as I hold in that formation. Uh, it looks like he did have some Milites Hospitalis in square, but he's quickly changed them uh, to a single line so that he could charge them in. And that's going to be a good shock bonus. Let's 
see what's going on over here. It looks like we got uh, some spears chasing down the archers. Oh, and it looks like he may have overstepped his mark, Cohen Master, getting all these archers in here. He quickly needs to get these pikemen with their pikes down uh, before before these uh, Fratres Milites Hospitalis close in. And it looks like he has. So, uh, yeah, Hamdog smartly is going to pull away from that attack. Uh, but he is pushing up some infantry, so we may see our first clash over here on this side. But over here, finally we got that last tower down as well. So all of his towers are destroyed. But we really need to close in uh, these two sections over here that are open. Especially because he has the cavalry advantage. Uh, I need to get some troops over to block these gaps ASAP. And actually, it looks like we may even have uh, some rear charges going on here. Luckily, Hoenn Master has some of his Scutatoy swordsmen over here that could maybe block the gap. And yeah, he's actually pulling his pikemen over. But I'm not even sure if they're going to get done in time. Oh, they need to hurry up. This could be close. Oh, come on. Ooh. Oh, just in time, I would say, he got them down. However, unfortunately, you can see that in some places they did manage to get through and they are flanking around the uh, the Mor Moretatoi, I think they're called. Or no, Kantaretoi. So yeah, really wrecking that unit there. They are actually wavering from that assault. Uh, he did take a few casualties, but for a tier 1 pikeman, getting rid of that very expensive unit of cav, I think it was pretty worth it. And yeah, I'm bringing forwards my troops now to block those gaps. But yeah, over here, I'm really having some trouble with my infantry. Starting to waver. They're taking a lot of casualties against the uh, spears. And of course, we've got the halberds in the mix as well. Which really doesn't help. Let's see if we can uh, zoom into a small area of the battle. And granted, this, this battle will be a little bit framey, as you guys can see. It's a little bit choppy, but uh, there is like 14,000 men on the battlefield, so. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of blood go on around here. And I think that's mostly on my men as well. <laughs> mostly my poor Scoot Toy Swordsmen uh, losing their heads, I think. But we did manage to rally. They haven't broken as of yet, which is good. So I'm basically just holding on both of these flanks. Uh, but I'm probably not going to win, if I would uh, take a guess. But here we go. Let's uh, zoom into these guys. Marching down towards this next area of assault. Hamdog CDXX is quite smart. He's actually pulled his line back so that he's defending one choke point instead of two. So when, when it's only you as a defender, you really have to think about things like that. Because him defending two choke points, it means he's using double the manpower and it means he has the potential to lose double the men. But I'm going to quickly form up uh, all of my elite swords to get a nice battle line going before I charge into these spears. But these spears should easily be able to hold uh, my four units of Scutatoy Swordsmen here. Uh, at least for, you know, I'd say ten minutes of the battle. Yeah, it actually looks like we have some, some more forces coming up. Uh, maybe to get a side flank off on me here. Uh, looks like the catapult crew actually is going to get a little bit of a side charge. Which is a little bit annoying. I'm still going to let my men form up though. Because I would rather just get them into position instead of uh, putting the attack order on them. But I am going to push forwards in against these spears now. You can see the onslaught of my soldiers moving into the battle. And that actually looks really awesome there. And we got the, we actually have the catapult crew that I ignored. They're actually uh, out, trying to outflank me over here. That's kind of funny. I want to see. Uh, I think actually my catapult crew is in here fighting their catapult crew. Yeah, yeah, it is. 
But let's uh, take a look at what else is going on. Hoenn Master, actually, yeah, he's he's really conquered a nice section of the streets here. And the best part about this this area is that he's going to be able to fire down right into the town center. So he's already pressing uh, towards the keep. But if we just take a look at the man count here, uh, we've lost almost a thousand men. Meanwhile, Hamdog's lost about 1,200, really. Yeah, so uh, he's he's lost quite a few men, so he, he's got to claw back a little bit here from here, I think. And this is a good way to start, actually. He's getting his unit of uh, Fratres Milites Hospitalis right in behind my lines, and I have nothing here to defend against them. Unless I decide to pull my units out of melee, which I really hate doing. But this is the problem with 12-12, is when you tell three units to attack one unit of spears, and they're stretched out like this, they'll all converge, uh, converge, converge in the center. But this allows uh, a lot of units to get in behind. You can see we've got these Milites Hospitalis over here. He's got some Military Order Swordsmen in, and he's got his Master of the Hospital in as well getting a nice charge onto my catapult crew. But it looks like we are going to get a nice charge here into the uh, Talia mercenaries. Who I'm uh, quickly trying to push into the battle. Yeah, the battle lines have just shifted to a mess. And I'm really in danger of blobbing up my forces, but I really need to get control of this flank. Look at this. Two units are wavering of my Skutatoi swordsmen, and they are almost full health just due to that Master of the Hospital charging into the backs. Luckily, they broke before my units actually uh, broke completely. But their morale is still very, very low due to the fact of the presence of these units in behind me. Uh, thankfully, we've got uh, Hoenn Master turning up with some of his pikemen. But unfortunately, he's pushing them right through the Milites Hospitalis. So he is losing a lot of men over here as well. Uh, it's possible he was focusing on other areas of the battle. But look at that. That unit of pikemen is gone to a tier 1, uh, tier one infantry unit. And here, here come two more. I think he realized his error, and he's quickly trying to get two more into the battlefield. I've got two more units over here, but again, I've got way too many units over here as it is. But I really need to get over into this section where you can just uh, see all of the men that did get around to my forces. Here we've got the Milites Hospitalis getting a nice flanking charge on my men, and they're already wavering, so this may actually break one, one of the units. So if you're rooting for the defenders now, uh, at this point, uh, it might look pretty hopeful. Whereas before, eh, it wasn't looking too good, but he's really working to turn around this battle uh, quite nicely. I saw that coming, too. I saw that, that opening, but I just had no units to push into that gap. And I basically just had to watch it happen. But I've got, I've got a couple more units coming over to reinforce my lines. I kind of want to push uh, over on this section, try and push into this side a little bit more. And we've got more of the anglo Varangioi coming in, Tier 3 Infantry, to hopefully plug this gap. But we are really blobbing our forces here, which is not good. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, over on the other side, yeah, it's also not looking good for me either. Uh, I'm having to send in my archers who have used up all, almost all of their ammo to see if I could break these uh, Milites Hospitalis. But yeah, one of, I think uh, one of my units is broken here. And how we do it on the other flank? Uh, again, most of my archers are out of ammo, so I pushed uh, them forwards as well. A lot of cheering going on. I'd save the cheering till after the battle. A lot of the settlement's still on fire as well. 
Let's pop this onto slow motion again. You guys do seem to like the uh, slow motion, as do I, so... My spears are still holding strong, though. I've got a nice, uh, thick column of spears. How are we looking as far as any other directions? It looks like Hoenn Master over here has actually pushed uh, almost to the keep, like I had said before, but now he's actually uh, pushing them back up the ramparts here into the city. Now, does he have any crossbows over here? Uh, looks like he did, but they actually got cut down a little bit. He's got some of the uh, Turkle Polyer. But I don't know if it's going to really make a difference here. Hoenn Master is really pressing his advantage on this side. However, as you can see, Hamdog, he's actually got a unit into the flanks of these spears. But luckily, I think that they're all turned to face those units, so they're not receiving any morale penalties. No, they're still at uh, 49 for their morale. But again, these Urban uh, Loricati, they are a solid spear unit. But we got spear versus spear over here, so this is going to be a grind fest because spears, spears do not get many kills. And it looks like we got some more units coming around the corner as well. Some more scoot to toy swordsmen, I believe. How we look in in the center here. We've got some Hospitaller Heavy Caravan that are present over here, but thankfully uh, they are obstructed because of the units in front, so they are not able to fire down. But yeah, at this point, I'm like, this is this is ridiculous. It's way too blobbed up, so I'm going to pull back a couple of my units of Italian mercenaries because we do not need, like, 12 units in this one little opening. They, he's only got four units over here. There's a lot of men over here. Looks like the Loricati are still pushing on our flanks as well. But yeah, if you look at my forces, uh, I pretty much committed everything that I have except for my three units of anglo Varangioi. Uh, so this is really it for my army. As far as Hoenn Master, uh, a lot of his Skutatoi swords are still full health, which is good. And he's got four units of anglo Varangioi in reserve, along with two units of uh, Contario. That's such a tongue twister. Contaratioi. I keep wanting to add more vowels in there and be like, con Contarat... Forget it, forget it. Moving on, moving on. So over here, we finally were able to break that unit of Fratres Milites Hospitalis, but now there's a big problem because we've got two units of pikemen, two units of crus... Or, sorry, one unit of pikemen and one unit of Hospitalis, but one unit of pikemen is going to be a real problem for my forces over here because I don't have any pikemen. I mean, I have halberdiers, which... Uh, I could push in, but uh, they just get destroyed by pikemen because pikemen have a better reach. Luckily, his pikes are kind of in this little weird position, kind of blobbing up in the center. Uh, they're not actually spread out, which is good. Uh, a couple of my spears over here are actually blocking them from getting a good line. But, yeah, a lot of my men are starting to get really tired. More units are breaking from this side of the battle. That's why I have my anglo Varangioi over here, because I may need them very soon. Over here, it's pretty much the same story. Uh, these pikemen are starting to push in. And my halberdiers are not doing too well with the swords. His halberdiers are doing well, though. 117 kills for his versus 47 kills for mine. But over here, we're doing better, I think. Uh, we're really starting to wear down this defense, actually. 
starting to see some wavering, but we've got some cross, uh, crossbow hospitaler caravan here that actually I think may be getting some flanking shots on these spears. I'm not exactly sure. I would be trying to focus on these spears if I could, but they may actually uh, be obstructed here. I'm not sure. No, it says they're firing, so... And same over here, firing. Yeah, they are firing on this unit of spears, so hopefully they... Hopefully they will be able to do some damage to them. And we've got another unit of Crusader Pedites as well pushing forwards. We've got some military o order swordsmen uh, because he needs to contain this flank over here. If, if Hohen Master is able to establish a little bit of a beachhead here, then he's got units that he can funnel into the center. And with how many units he still has fighting on the front lines, uh, he can't have the, the rear of these flanks being compromised like that. But yeah, I'm just getting massive breaks over here. I'm continually trying to send my Scoot to Toy Swords back into melee and over here as well. And over here, because of the pikemen, I call a retreat, which I rarely, rarely do. But in here, it's kind of worth it. I have a little bit of ammo left with my archers, and I want to try to fire on those uh, Crusader Panites. But Hamdog CDXX, he's aware of that, and he's going to be pushing his spears to attack my spears once again. But luckily, we've kind of formed up our lines a little bit better now. And there we go, getting a volley. Getting a volley off into the into the pikemen. Men are running. Stand and fight, damn you. Yeah, yeah, we're running I think we're running over on this flank over here actually yeah look at this my one last unit of Scuta Toy Swordsman is holding I'm gonna send my Italian mercenaries back into the fight as well but my spears they yeah they I'm trying to get them into somewhat of a decent decent formation because I want to be in spear wall once those pikes kind of hit me because if I'm not I'm just going to get shredded Let's uh, put it on slow motion again. Yeah, I think that's the last of my men on that on that flank breaking. Or at least the Italian mercenaries are. Those Italian mercenaries are cowards. They've been breaking more than fighting in this battle. Let's go ahead and take a look in the center, see what's happening over there. I think Hohen Master is committing more forces to this fight. He does have his pikemen in here as well, but Hamdog's pikemen are much, much better than, than Hoenn's pikemen are. These are just tier 1 pikes. These Crusader Pedites are tier 3. They've already got 400 kills, and mostly against my poor uh, Scutatoy swords, who are definitely shaken up at the fact of losing so many of their brave men. Let's kind of get a shot uh, down the pike line if we can. There we go, that's nice. We do have some archer fire coming in, though, from Hohen Master's archers, which is always helpful. At this point, I don't really even think we care about friendly fire as long as we get rid of those pikes, but... There we go. We're seeing some kills, which is nice. Our men have given up and are running for their lives. My brave Scutatoy swordsmen are pushing forwards. We've got some Anglo Varangioi kind of scattered in. Oh, but he's he gets slain by a by a pike as well. I think most of the men lying on the ground here have been skewered on the Crusader pikes. But what do we got over here? We've got some Dynatoy from Hohen Master. I'm not sure what he's planning to do with them. But how's it going over here if we run over across to this side? It looks like he has broken through. However, I think he's a little unnerved by this very heavy shock cavalry here. So he's not really sending his spears forwards just yet. 
because he's going to have to deal with one flank over here and then the second flank. So he's going to have to kind of pour his troops to both sides and create a bit of a gap so that he can send more reinforcements through. There we go. Those archers have broken. Take a look at the man count again now. Uh, so we've lost quite a bit now. Hamdog has lost just about half of his force. And we are quickly dropping here. We've got, I think we've lost 3,600 men. And Hamdog has lost 2,500. So he's he's killed over 1,000 more men than he's lost. So the balance of power is still looking pretty good for us just to, due to our man count. We still have a 3,000 man advantage. But he's cut it down from 3,600 to 3,000. And I think it's all due to these really elite pikemen. Almost up to 700 kills now. That is crazy. And my they finally broke in there, but my forces have just been obliterated over here. Whoops. Let's see how we're doing over here as well. Yes, I did manage to get some Italian mercenaries over here. Uh, that are fighting on the flanks of the pikemen, so I was able to kind of skirt around them, which is good. But they are losing a lot of men due to the Hospitaller Heavy Caravan that was right there firing into their backs. But I just wanted to just get rid of these pikemen. I think that was my only goal in most of this battle, is just like get around these pikemen, hold them up from the front, kind of skirt around the flanks, and then just press in. And the formation is being is being compromised a little bit by my mercenaries, which is good. You see a lot of them are having to kind of pull out their swords to fight in, in close combat. But 20 minutes left in the battle. And we are just struggling over here. Same with this unit of Crusader Pedites. Uh, really just kind of mowing through my spears. I think is the time now that we should activate my Anglo Varangioi to maybe control this flank. There's some more Crusader swordsmen charging back in for the umpteenth time because they just charge and break. But I'm really impressed with how this uh, Tier 1 infantry is doing for Jerusalem. Uh, usually they don't really get many kills and they tend to break pretty quickly. But I think uh, in combo with the Pikemen, uh, it's a pretty good pretty good choice for them. Uh, we've got some cavalry over here though. I believe this is my cavalry. And my spears are breaking and he's pushing forwards his pikes. But they do not have their pikes down. So I need to quickly get a nice charge off. Here we go. Yes. Nice charge into the pikemen there. Really just kind of pushing through their ranks now that they don't really have a solid line whatsoever. And yeah, this unit of pikemen dropped from about full health to uh, 120. I need to get my pikes out though. Or sorry, uh, Hoenn Master needs to get his cab out though. And here I'm going for another cycle charge with my Dinotoy. And just trying to tie them up in this formation. Uh, it's worth sacrificing my Cav if we can keep them like this. Because once they're in melee, it's really difficult for them to kind of reform. And and the risk is, is if they do reform, uh, they're going to get cycle charged just like this again. So yeah, Cavalry versus Pikeman. I know that's not the best choice, but we're a little bit desperate at this point. We're really losing control of our flanks. Here come my Anglo Varangioi as well. Pushing into the fight. How we look in on the middle. Yeah, so I've committed the last of my forces over here. And my Italian mercenaries, again, are uh, really struggling. And over here, my forces are pretty much non-existent. So this flank is kind of up to Hohen Master and his, his men. They're going to have to be able to turn the tide on that flank. And over here as well, we've got uh, more Crusader Pedites fighting these elite spears. 
But Hoenn's going to be able to hold on this flank with his spears, I think, but he's not really going to be able to advance, unfortunately. I think these are only high period Crusader Pedites as well. You can tell the difference, they're a lot more generic, but then we have the uh, late period ones just over here in square. And uh, they look much more professional, much more heavily armored. But I think Hamdog does have them in square because it gives them a, a morale bonus. Yeah, they're up to 57. And yeah, over here we've got a major problem if we turn this back onto slow motion here. Uh, we're really losing control of this flank. We've left some openings again, so Hamdog is again able to get his really elite cav out from behind. And then be able to cycle charge all of these units here. And our morale is already not good in this center. So just getting a charge like that is really going to cause us some problems. So, well done by Hamdog there. Yeah, a lot of these Skutatoi Swordsmen are breaking. Uh, I'm quickly trying to move my general over here to contain some of this cavalry. And I, I actually did pull my cavalry out of that, of that fight over here because I felt that it was more necessary that we kind of contain that cav so that they can't come and charge into the rears of all of my soldiers that are still fighting here. And these pikemen still hang on. Again, another 700 kills by this unit of pikes. That is insane. But the bonus is that Hamdog, it looks like he's committed all of his forces now. He's got one more unit of Crusader Pedites of the high period, but other than that, everybody is in melee. But yeah, we just got this cavalry over here that's really just running amok. I'm charging my general in over here to maybe, hopefully, stop these Milites Hospitalis. Uh, although the Dinatoy should be okay with doing that. The men are running. And we've Cowards. got the uh, general over here for Hoenn Master actually committing into uh, some of these cavalry as well. And it looks like it looks like the Grand Master of the Hospital is actually finishing off the last of the Scutatoy swords over here. And if we look at the balance of power again, look at that man count now. We have lost so many soldiers. He's down to 1,700 men, but we have 2,800 men, so we only have about a 1,000 man advantage at this point. So he is really turning it around. At this point, Hoenn Master, he's brought up his Varangian Guard. Uh, it may be good to get them into the battle quickly because we, we need some help on our flanks. Over here, my spears are holding, but on this flank, I am losing quite considerably. Thankfully, we broke those pikemen. And we just have these spears here left. But I am worried about what could come down this flank to kind of finish me off. I don't see that Hamdog's forces are all committed in melee. So for all I know, there could be another two units of pikemen that would just easily overwhelm my numbers. Oh, but these Urbum Loricati uh, just hold forever. It was so annoying. I could not break them. And he's got his crossbows over here as well. Which somehow still have ammo. I don't even know why. But yeah, I'm pushing my cavalry through, so at this point I've broken through on this flank. So I'm going to start to push into the city, and these two units of crossbows, they do look like a nice juicy target. But my cavalry is being very slow at the moment in trying to move forwards. And we've got the general's bodyguard, the Grand Master of the hospital. He has not given up this defense just yet. He himself is coming back to kind of block off this choke point so that I cannot get back into the town center. 
But, yeah, over here, still struggling to contain the cavalry. This uh, Scutatoy Swordsman over here is actually still holding out, even though they're fighting on both flanks, so that's pretty impressive there. But the Grand Master has recalled a lot of his elite cavalry to the town center for the final defense. And it looks like we are seeing a retreat of some of the more elite units as well. Our men are breaking up. And they're forming up some more, you know, some more defenses in the streets. Which I really don't think is necessary for him, because my men are just so exhausted, I would be surprised if they could even lift their swords at this point. Yeah, look, my men aren't even charging in. They're just... They're just... Accepting their fate, being pushed back by the pikemen. And there goes the crossbow bolts as well. Firing into my men as well. As they try to go up into the town center. Yeah, mass wavering going on. Over here, my cavalry is broken as well. So I can no longer contain this flank. Hohen Master does have one unit of late period Dynatoy, but they are exhausted, so they're not really going to be able to do too much. And yeah, at this point, uh, I, I think we were both pretty concerned that uh, we may lose this battle. It's definitely looking to swing kind of towards Hamdog's favor. This balance of power I really didn't think was that accurate, uh, because now we're actually down to a 700-man advantage. And my army is pretty much destroyed. Over here, we've got a nice flank from some more Crusader Pandites, blocking in the last of my Dinatoy. Rest in peace, brave Trebizondian cavalry. Yeah, there they are, starting to be pulled from their horses as they try and retreat. So let's zoom out and take a look at the battle here. I managed to break these spears with my general's bodyguard. And now I'm going to turn around and break this unit of Hospitaller Heavy Caravan that I had previously broken but has now returned uh, to the fight. So I'm just trying to get rid of a couple of units that, you know, may pose a problem later on. But the big issue now is that I'm holding with my two units of spears over here. But Hamdog has a lot of this cavalry that can now come out this one open flank and get around my men. So at this point, Hohen Master, he's committed his Varangian Guard into the fight as well, which is good. And the frames just immediately drop as I try to zoom into this center courtyard because there's just probably thousands of bodies lying dead. Well, we've got the General's Bodyguard over here as well with the Varangian Guard, managing to break uh, what's, you know, what's left of that unit of Milites Hospitalis. And we do have some very elite Crusader Pedites that are probably slowly moving into position once again to block off this choke point. And yeah, he still hasn't committed his four units of Anglo Varangioi though, which is good. And he's got three units of Spathroi Guard over here that are going to try and hold against the Crusader Pedites. Uh, two units plus these spears. Looks like they're going to push down the slopes to battle. So the elite Spathroi Guard have been called into action. We've also got a unit of spears, I think, that was breaking, and now they're going to be able to get a little bit of a flank off. Oh, and those birds are going to have a nice feast. Until they can no longer fly, they're going to have so much... Uh, so much nice meat to eat. That's pretty gross when I think about it. It's like hundreds of vultures just all convening on this one section over here. All right, so yeah, with what's left, or with what's left, blech, of my forces, 
over here. I've just got these two units of spears, and I've got my general's bodyguard. Hamdog had formed up his Milites Hospitalis over here to probably get a nice rear charge on the backs of my men, but luckily he stopped them just long enough so that I could get my general to block uh, that rear charge. So, there we go. So my general is now completely committed to melee. He will not pull out of this engagement. It's do or die at this point. And uh, good thing he blocked this because look at this. I'm starting to actually break uh, the Urba Loricati finally. And we're breaking some of the Milites Hospitalis over here as well. So I'm actually controlling this flank quite nicely. However, we've got the Grandmaster in the hospital with uh, some late period Milites Hospitalis coming in as well. I think that Hohen Master is quickly going to send his Emperor's Bodyguard uh, to save his brother in arms. But yeah, I think they're trying to get in around my general to A, slam into the back of him so that he can die, basically. And get another unit over into the backs of my Scooter toy as well. But yeah, I'm starting to crack them, which is excellent. And I think at this point, I do actually pull one of my units of spears back. Because I don't need two units here to take on this very depleted unit. So I'm going to try and get my spears over against this unit. But they actually do get a pretty solid charge against me. And of course, they go right into the unit that's not facing the oncoming cavalry. Yeah, and that's really going to pull our numbers down. However, the general actually is losing quite a few men. He is shaken and exhausted. I would love to find where he is. I don't actually know what he would look like, to be honest. Where are you? Uh, is this him here? Because he has a golden strip on his helmet. That might be him. Yeah, I think that might be him, actually. Because I don't see anybody else that looks uh, differently. But yeah, we did manage to actually break the general's bodyguard. So my, my spears really really being the MVPs here, getting rear charged by the heavy shock cavalry and attacked in the front line, and they're still holding out. Unfortunately, though, we've got another unit of uh, Milites Hospitalis that are going to probably finish off my spears. But we can pop that back onto play. Seven minutes left in the battle, so it's really kind of coming to a close. And here we go, we've got a depleted unit of spears that's going to go in against my Emperor's bodyguard as well. But yeah, the Varanging Guard have actually finished off what's left of this middle defense. However, unfortunately, they need to quickly push forwards because these uh, Hospitaller Heavy Caravan are going to be, uh, you know, just tearing them to pieces here. He's losing a lot of his Varanging Guard there. Oh yeah, another good volley. And he's still controlling this section over here. He has yet another unit of Crusader Pedites that is just causing so much trouble over here. Spathroid Guard starting to take uh, some losses. Yeah, this one's actually almost dead. And his spear's all wavering. So we look back at the man count again. Hamdog has about 700 men. We have 1,300 men. So now it's about a 500 man advantage. Five or 600. But there we go, my general was wavering, but the oncoming Emperor's bodyguard saved the, kind of saved my general there, basically. But my spears are broken, so I'm just down to my general. So I hold my general in melee so that uh, Hohen Master's Emperor can get out of there alive. And yeah, there we go. So now Hamdog, he really needs to get these forces back into the town center because we've got some anglo Varangioi that are going to be flanking around these very elite units of pikemen and crusader pedites. And I think Hamdog realizes that. He's got his crossbows kind of set in some, some good little areas to get some shots off. And it looks like they're going to charge right for the crossbows. 
but he's going to quickly try and get them away from the pikemen so that he can flank around uh, with his pikes. This is actually a lot longer of a battle than I expected. It seemed to go by in about 30 minutes when I was playing it. But I guess time flies when you're having fun. He's still trying to get his crossbows over here. So that, so that this unit of Anglo Ferengi is uh, kind of, you know, gonna be pincered from both sides here. But it looks like the Varangian Guard are going to get into the back of the Crusader Pedites. And yeah, I think my general is dead at this point. I don't know exactly where he died, but he was retreating from the battlefield. I think this unit of uh, Milites Hospitalis ran him down. And, and there we go, my my allies general as well has been slain. So all of our generals are gone at this point, which is not a good thing at all. And it looks like he's just going to uh, turn around and charge right back into that unit of Milites Hospitalis. But yeah, the Emperor's bodyguard will surely fall here. And uh, we're not really going to focus on too much else that's going on over here. We've just got this fight in the town center that we really need to focus on. Uh, we may jump back there to take a look at Hamdog's uh, cavalry. But yeah, now these pikes are kind of in trouble here. I think they were in square formation, but they were pulled out of square formation right before they were outflanked. Let's get a nice shot of them kind of in the, in the center. The Jerusalem flag still does fly. But the Varangian Guard are really going to make short work of these pikemen now that they're outflanked, yeah. Fortunately, in this situation, these pikes don't stand a chance. But I think that's a about it. Uh, we've got this unit of anglo Varangua that actually catches these Milites Hospitalis in melee, which is pretty crazy. He's trying to get them out of there. The enemy refuses to admit defeat. The unit is and rallied. this unit of Milites Hospitalis needs to get back to the town center, but at this point I think that they're just too far out to really make a difference. And the town center, as you can see, is starting to fall. 800 to 400 men now, so we have a 400 man advantage. From 3,600 we are down to 400 uh, men more than him. But we still outnumber him 2-1, to one, and his forces are going to start to drop now as we kind of cut down the remains. Got these Crusader Penites, who actually did manage to form into square. But that's kind of a weird-looking square. They're really, really losing a lot of men. Oh, and they're about to be outflanked over here as well. Oh, that's frustrating. But we do have this uh, unit of cavalry again coming over here. Hopefully these Hospitaller Heavy Caravan can hold just long enough to keep the anglo Varangioi and Varangian Guard distracted so that this unit can get a nice good charge. But actually it looks like looks like they're going to break just in time. However, this anglo Varangioi they can't form shield wall or anything because they don't have shields, obviously. So, if he kind of lines up, he may actually get a pretty decent charge here. Yeah, going right through that unit and into the Varangian Guard there. And actually, is the Varangian Guard surrounded now? It looks like they are, because the Hospitaller Heavy Caravan is fighting here. And the Varangian Guard uh, is really dropping. As well as the anglo Varangio. Yeah, they're starting to waver. Oh, and there goes Hamdog. He's starting to pull out his cavalry again, but you guys all know what happens when you pull units out in 1212 and Attila. You just you end up losing the unit. So now he's just going to charge what's left of his Hospitaller Heavy Caravan into the Varangian Guard. And we've got this cavalry over here uh, that I think is going to line up and try to get either a charge on this unit or a charge on this unit. And I think he's going to go for the uh, weaker unit. Very nice charge there. Even with only a few cav, 15 cav, they can really get a good charge. And 
and I think that's about it. He has this one unit of halberds left, but let's take a final look at the man count. Yes, we have about 670 men left in this in this fight, so he managed to kill 3,000 more men than we did to him. And there we go, Furic victory. Let's take a look at the results, and then we can end the battle. Because this has been a long one. For an unfortified town assault and a 2 versus one uh, that's pretty impressive that it even lasted that long, too. But looking at my forces, my spear is doing all... Or, sorry, at Hohen Masters. A couple of his spears doing all right, but his pikes really not so much. Uh, Spathroid Guard, not as good. Some of his Anglo Varangioid did pretty solid, though. And 286 by the Varangian Guard, very nice there. And his archer is doing well. For my forces, again, a couple units of my spear is doing okay in my general. Uh, the Italian mercenaries were useless, basically. Uh, solid kills all around by the Scutatoi Swordsman. It's a bit hit or miss. And the Anglo of Rangui, not too many kills. My archers, uh, not so much. Looking at Hamdog's forces, though, is General 136. Uh, a couple of his spears, really high kills, which is nice to see. They usually don't get many kills. And then Crusader Petite is 304, 229, 125, Pikeman 474, 682, 745. That is a lot of men by those three units. And uh, with his Milites, Hospitalis, 136, 185, 120. Even this really cheap tier 1 unit, 108. Uh, a couple of his military order swords been doing solid. Hospitaller Heavy Caravan, 375, 486, 495. And then his cavalry all getting, almost all getting over 100 kills. So really, really well there. Jerusalem OP. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this battle. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to see more 1212 content in the future. But let's be honest, I'll probably bring out more anyways. And I will see you in the next one.